Hello from California, where things are really getting spicy. In case you missed it, Donald Trump ordered the National Guard to help uh, our secret police disappear people off the streets in the name of immigration control over the objections of our governor, Gavin Newsom, who Trump said should be arrested simply for running for office. The good news is that neighbors are stepping up to protect one another from the Gestapo and also to protect our entire nation's constitutional rights, particularly the right to due process. Obviously, this is seen as violence because any pushback against an oppressive state is painted as violence by the media and the elites, which I've discussed several times now, like in 2022, when I defended the tactics of the Just Stop Oil protesters. Obviously, the violence originates with the authoritarian police state. As people gather to peacefully protest the disappearing of minorities and immigrants, cops in full military gear are firing tear gas and pepper spray and rubber bullets at them, including at journalists who are simply documenting what's happening. After hours of standing off, this situation has now rapidly deteriorated. The LAPD moving in on horseback, firing rubber bullets at protesters, moving them on through the heart of LA. You just shut the up. You okay? Yeah. Okay, no, I'm good. I'm good. good. Are you okay? Hey. Where? Where did it hit you? Just my leg under. Fascists. Reporting that they're fascists. You're okay. You're okay. You're not okay. All of this means that there is also a war happening online, a war of misinformation. It's not just media outlets reporting all of this as if rioters are storming LA, burning down schools and hospitals. There are also well-meaning people who are sharing information that either isn't true or isn't true and is actively harmful. So first of all, let me just remind you that whenever big, scary things like this happen, think long and hard before you share information that you can't confirm is true. Over on Blue Sky, a BBC disinformation journalist has a thread showing some good examples of bad disinformation, including a fake news outlet claiming the Marines have arrested the master sergeant of the California National Guard for disobeying Trump, video footage from 2020 protests being passed off as happening now, and even AI video of a supposed member of the National Guard provoking protesters in front of an LAPC patrol car. Los Angeles pitiful cucks, I guess, whatever. I've also seen this infographic making the rounds on social media, like on a subreddit dedicated to organizing. I cannot say this strongly enough, do not dump Maalox in your eyes. In fact, don't dump any liquid into your eyes that isn't just plain old water. No antacid, no baby shampoo, no milk, no nothing but water. Randomized controlled trials show that these add-ons don't do much, if anything, while posing a greater danger of allergic reactions and infections. Here's what you should actually do when faced with the threat of tear gas, as recommended by doctors who practice medicine in these kinds of environments and researchers who have studied these tactics. First of all, if you have any kind of respiratory disorder, avoid exposure at all costs. Tear gas is relatively safe, but it is not non-lethal. And we should reject that phrase for the way that it covers up the actual damage of this tactic and others like rubber bullets. These tactics are in fact just less lethal, by which we mean less lethal than a real gun firing a real bullet not coated in rubber, uh, which it's not really that high of a bar. You know, a samurai sword is less lethal than the AR-15s that our police forces carry. But tear gas really can fuck people up who are more vulnerable, like those with asthma or even those who are pregnant because it's been known to cause spontaneous abortions. You'd think that that would be enough for Republicans to ban its use on American citizens, but I guess they just love brutality more than babies. Who knew? A fun side note I learned from my friend Kave Hoda's podcast interview with Dr. James Chenoweth during the Black Lives Matter protests. 
Tear gas is banned from being used in war, but it's legal for American police to use against citizens. The reason it's banned in war isn't because of how unethically dangerous it is, but because it's hard to know exactly what type of chemical weapon you're using, meaning that just using tear gas might make an enemy think that you're using something way worse, so they might then escalate to the really nasty shit. As of right now, American citizens do not have access to things like, say, sarin nerve gas, so the cops don't have to worry about escalation, and they can torture us as much as they'd like. See? Isn't that a fun fact? I have the funnest facts. Anyway, for most people, tear gas probably isn't going to be a huge deal, although it's worth noting something suggested by the aforementioned fun fact. We don't necessarily know what chemical agents the cops are using exactly, and we don't know about the long-term effects. So that's another fun fact. Um, Oh, and also the cans are very hot, the cans that they shoot out of a gun. So people have been injured by being hit with those, just like the less lethal but still absolutely lethal rubber bullets. So that means that if you think you might encounter tear gas, it is best to take precautions. A gas mask is great. If it covers your eyes, make sure it's shatterproof. The vintage ones often aren't. An N95 mask you probably have on hand might help a little bit, but they're not very useful against petroleum-based projectiles. So a P100 mask will work better. Wear goggles, ideally chemistry goggles that don't have vents on the side. Don't wear contact lenses if you can help it. Wear long sleeves and heavy gloves, especially if you plan to try to pick up the extremely hot tear gas canisters to chuck them back from whence they came. But remember that you can also neutralize those canisters by putting buckets or traffic cones on top of them. It's worth noting that the number one effect that cops are looking for when they use tear gas on a crowd is to scare you. They want you to be scared. They want you to freak out and to run away. So the first thing you need to remember if you are exposed to tear gas is don't panic. Easier said than done, I know, but it's important because when a large crowd of people panics, people get hurt. They get crushed. So don't panic. Move out of the area as safely as you can. Ideally find higher ground because tear gas is actually a particulate that will fall down to the ground. Make sure you do not rub your face at all. Remove your contacts if you wore them, despite me telling you not to. Why did you do that? Uh, Clean your glasses before you put them back on. Experts suggest that you rinse your eyes with a lot of water, more water than you think, one to two liters. Um, As soon as you can, you should strip down, throw away your clothes. Experts also suggest that you wash your skin with soap and water, though that is actually controversial because the tear gas particulates stick to anything that's wet. So it might actually be better to stand in front of a fan, ideally with an unmasked cop behind you, uh, or stick your head out the car window. If you do all that, you should be fine in about 30 minutes. Now, You know I like to end things with a call to action, so here it is. Please keep yourself and your neighbors as safe as possible when fighting for your rights. And also, can someone with more talent than me please take all of this information and make a colorful infographic so people will stop sharing the other infographic with bad misinformation on it? (laughs) Thank you. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you loved the video, please subscribe. And if you think the world could use more videos like this and you happen to have a few bucks laying around, head to patreon.com slash Rebecca and join an awesome community of nerds like the people whose names you see on the screen right now. Thanks.